I'd like to commence this video with a request. For those interested in receiving more premium betting tips and predictions, especially if my guidance has contributed to your success in winning bets and generating revenue, I kindly seek your support in revitalizing this channel. Your assistance plays a crucial role in bolstering my presence on YouTube. You're welcome to explore my Patreon support tier or check out my various plans. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you seeking our premium picks. You can find the link in the bio and comment section below. Thank you for considering and supporting me. Braves versus Pirates? My team pick is... Pirates Moneyline. The Pirates have a bright future with two elite, young pitching prospects. Paul Skeens and Jared Jones will be at the top of the rotation for the next decade, and although they are struggling out the gate from the plate, pitching should remain consistent throughout the year. Bailey Falter has delivered back-to-back -back quality starts, giving him four on the season, and the lefty will take a 3.53 era, 0.98 whip, and 29-13 KBB through 51 innings into this game against an Atlanta team starting an unproven guy. Vines was called up two days ago, and he was not sharp in his prior visit at the major league level. Heading into the finale with the Cubs, Atlanta has lost five of seven. Take the Pirates to win game one. My total pick, um, over. When Neil Cruz had a dismal two-run error early against the San Francisco Giants on Tuesday and responded with a record-breaking performance. He finished that game three for five with one RBI. All three of Cruz's hits were hammered with a 121.5 MPH double, a 120.4 MPH single, and a 116.3 MPH double. According to Yahoo.com, he is now the first player in the StatCast era to have three hits in one game over 115 MPH, and his 121.5 MPH double is the hardest hit ball in MLB action this year, topping the 120.4 MPH single he hit earlier in the game today. Heading into Thursday, he is 19 for 64.297 in May with four home runs, 10 runs scored, and 11 RBI. He should be able to tag a few of Vine's offerings, and this game will go over. Blue Jays versus Tigers. My team pick is the Blue Jays to win. When looking at how these starting pitchers attack, Alec Manoa is pitching to a .167 opposing batting average, while Matt Manning has a .287 batting average against this season. The ability to hit home runs throughout the previous seven games shows how well these offenses do slugging the ball, as Toronto has eight homers in that span, while Detroit only has hit a pair of home runs in that stretch of games. All in all, go with the Toronto Blue Jays to pick up a road win in this game. My total pick is, um, over 8.5 runs. These offenses have been on fire as of late as the Blue Jays are scoring 5.57 runs in their last seven games, while the Tigers are averaging five runs in their previous seven games. Even these pitcher splits are not what you want if you like the under as Alec Manoa is pitching to a 13.50 era on the road this year, while Matt Manning has a 5.82 era inside Comerica Park thus far. Go with over 8.5 runs in this game is the better option here. Mariners versus Nationals. Um, my team pick is um, Mariners Moneyline. This should be an interesting series over the weekend, but when the dust settles on Friday night, I think it'll be the Mariners who take care of business. They're playing some pretty sound baseball right now, leading a tough AL, West Division. The M's will square off against the Nats side that's just won to seven Sioux in their last eight games. This feels like a steal getting them at only minus 145 on the money line. Ultimately, with the way Washington's offense is trending right now downward, this is a spot where Seattle should be able to impose its dominant pitching staff on their opponent. The M's will go with George Kirby, and he has limited the current Nationals team to a slash line of .208 forward slash .208 forward slash .250 over 24 at bats. Let's take the Mariners to win this game in a lower scoring affair. My total pick is, um, under eight runs. I also like this spot for Kirby and the Mariners because the pitchers will take on a Washington offense that's been the worst in baseball over the last two weeks. Over the last 15 days, the Nationals are dead last in OPS .585, 29th in home runs 8, and 28th in team batting average .206. Seattle also brings in a solid bullpen, which is ranked 12th in era 3.76, and 6th in whip 1.19. On the flip side, Mackenzie Gore has posted two consecutive quality starts in his last two outings. He'll be tasked with slowing down a Seattle offense that's just 18th in team batting average .232 and 19th in OPS .685 in the last 15 days. 
I think both of these starters could have big nights, so I'll play the under in this series opener. Royals vs. Rays My team pick is... Royals to win. These starting pitchers are on two completely different levels this season as Seth Lugo is 4-0 with a 0.62 era and a .141 opposing batting average in four road starts 29.0 innings, while Tyler Alexander is 1-1 with a 5.88 era and a .252 batting average against in five home games two starts in. 26.0 innings. When looking at the offensive numbers with runners in scoring position this season, there is a major difference as Kansas City is second in the majors, with a .864 team ops in those situations, while Tampa Bay is own at 24th, with a .656 team ops with runners in scoring position this season. All in all, go with the Kansas City Royals to pick up a win in this game. Brewers vs. Red Sox My team pick is... Red Sox to win. The Red Sox took two of three games from the Brewers in Milwaukee when they met last season. They have the benefit of putting Crawford to the hill in this matchup. The right-hander may only be 1-2 in five home starts, but he has a 2.73 era and has held opponents to a point, double 24 batting average at Fenway. They are also benefiting from having their best hitter in full motion right now. Devers has hit safely in 23 of his last 26 games, a span in which the third baseman hit point 320. Boston is that pest that you can't get to go away in riding off a sweep of the Rays, they have a great chance to prove themselves against a strong NL side now. The Brewers are scoring nearly a half run less on the road than at home this season. Take the Red Sox. My total pick is... The Red Sox have rattled off four straight wins coming into this series, including a three-game sweep of division rival Tampa Bay. The Boston offense has scored 225 runs, seventh in the AL, and they slashed dot 243 forward slash dot 313 forward slash dot 408 through 50 games, collecting 159 extra base hits and 41 stolen bases. Their 486 strikeouts were third most in the American League, and they had 155 walks. Rafael Devers moved into 15th place in the Owl with a team high point two, double seven batting average. On the strength of home runs in six straight games last week, the Sox third baseman now has 10 on the year, with 23 RBI and 25 runs scored, under 9.5 runs. When they met a season ago, they underwent 2-1 as the two teams averaged 11.3 combined runs per game, due in large part to 17 runs scored in their last meeting. There have been a combined 47 games between the two teams that have gone under this season. As noted above, Milwaukee is averaging fewer runs on the road while at the same time, the Red Sox are scoring nearly a run less on the home front. On the other end, Crawford has been extremely solid for Boston this season and has yielded little at Fenway this season. His counterpart, Wilson, has a 3.05 era in seven appearances away from home this season, coupled with a 1.02 whip. I expect the two starters to remain stingy. The under went 2-1 for both clubs in their last series. Take the under.